Hello, Hiroshi Shive here with another review of Mr. Robot Season 3, Episode 8, Don't Delete Me. Uh, I think this episode is referred to colloquially as uh, Elliot's Adventures in Babysitting, which is an old uh, 80s film uh, with Elizabeth Shue, I believe, and uh, Vincent D'Onofrio as like this Thor character. Eventually, I thought they were going to spin off, but uh, it's a very fun old 80s uh, movie. Um, you can probably find it on Netflix or Amazon or streaming. It's a, it's a good little little nugget there. Uh, but it's a, it's a very ne next slowdown. Last episode was um, dealing more with the fallout, if you will, of the loss of, you know, Trenton and Mulvey, the fallout from that. And now we have a kind of continuation of that thread of the impact of what is happening, not only to Elliot, Darlene, Angela, but to the world at large, even to some extent to Tyra Wellick. Uh, we're seeing further decay as we're watching Elliot go through the city of New York. The National Guard is now in full force. They are, um, it looks like they actually have camps or something is going on in Trenton's neighborhood where they're, I'm not sure if it's like, uh, what's that movie, Siege with Denzel Washington about um, Islamic attacks in America, uh, where they had like uh, internment camps where they were imprisoning young Muslim men. I'm not sure exactly what is going on, but uh, they are just out in force. The curfew is like a very like limited time. You have to be at home by eight, to, they're shouting all the time, they're walking the streets with their, um, you know, uh, M16 rifles, it looks like, um, and, you know, they're going through the streets, and it's, it looks like chaos, there's people living on the streets more and more, you're seeing that, um, you're seeing a little bit of scuffling in the background, uh, there have been news reports about, like, armed robberies, but you kind of hear that a little bit in the background about what's going to call, what's going on. At the same time with that disconnect where there's like the, the kind of like New York is descending to like those what New York used to look like back in the 70s and 60s when they had like the the hollowing out of American cities as uh, white flight or um, the busting out of cities and people leaving the cities and going to suburbia and uh, abandoning the cities and you have all these abandoned buildings and stuff like that is increasingly looking like that the feel of you can feel like the tension around the city itself is just kind of slowly ratcheting up uh, at the same time contrasting that people are still living their normal lives they're still doing things like going to the movies and paying things in e-coin uh, which is uh, which occurs later on with Elliot um, still having events still buying ice cream from the ice cream man um, strange little things that shows the kind of contrast which is very similar to what occurred during the economic crash of 2008 and even to some extent um, what occurred during the Great Depression where you have a lot of people in abject poverty uh, really get really gain by around the cities and then you have people just you know living their lives living all right like they didn't know what the depression was they didn't experience it because they were so well off or they were in a region where um, people were working and while they were struggling, they were not to the extent that other people were. Uh, so you're seeing that very contrast and it's very um, jarring when you see the visual, visual aids there. Uh, while I love this episode, they didn't really get to why when we get um, to the end to why it's called Don't Delete Me. As I talked about in my live reaction, why did Trenton trust Elliot with that information? That email from basically what happened when during Frederick and Tanya, what happened with Trenton and Mulvey, they're dying. Um, and then getting blamed basically for where they're now calling Building 71. Remember building, the Building 71, 71. Remember 71, that's the rally cry in the Mr. Robot universe now. Um, they even being blamed for the terrorist attacks. We don't know why that backup plan that, that uh, Trent talked about, talked about at the end of season two, how she says, I think I found a way to undo this. There's a way, and she did find a way. And was, as we find out, um, um, 
in the email, the contents of the email is that, you know, she, she realized, she always investigated, I, I talked about this and I talked about it previously, Trenton is the most capable of the hackers, but I will say almost equivalent or equal to both versions of Elliot, the Mr. Robot and Elliot version. Um, she has demonstrated that. Darlene's very sophisticated in the sense of the social engineering aspect of hacking, of getting into people, but she's a little bit sloppy in her execution sometimes. We saw that with when she took over the leadership of a society in her plan through. Uh, she can get into a place and knows a place and everything else, but that, that, that little fine tuning, that little, she she's a first draft girl. She just first take. That's it. It doesn't matter. That's it. That that's the take. When it probably needs maybe a couple more drafts, a little bit more polishing, um, and then she'd be good to go. But she's still stubborn in that and a little arrogant in her her powers because she's been able to go so far with just kind of winging it, but still knowing what she's doing. Um, you know, Trin has proven to be capable with her first meeting with Moby and Darlene at the, the cafe and getting recruited in, being brought back in. Why she was there, she was there to, you know, help her family have a bit better understanding and insight. When Elliot goes and meets her family and, and has a bit of time with her with her brother, you know, she took a hacker name from where the place where her brother was born. Um, how important Trenton, New Jersey was for the family having fled. Um, I'm assuming it's Iran, but they didn't specify, but I'm assuming it was Iran that they had fled for whatever reason. Um, she wasn't born, you know, as her brother said, wasn't born in this country. He was born in this country. He could be president of the United States. Um, he could, um, you know, change things. He could find out what really happened to his sister and make those bad men pay, as he said. And then he can make people like him. And Elliot kind of told him, you know, that makes him a dictator. And, you know, um, you can understand why he was coming the way he won, how excited he was knowing that he could become a president if he wanted to, president of all this country. Um, and also understand why he can make people like him because of what they're no doubt he's saying about him and his family because of uh, the alleged actions of his sister. And just in general being Muslim in this country. Um, probably gets it a little bit um, from other kids and these non-Muslim kids. So... You can understand some of the sentiment where he's coming from, but the excitement, the pride, the promise of America, how America is, was or supposed to be way better than where they came from. And it's unfortunately for Trenton's family has not turned out to be the case. You know, where are they going to go? Where, where can you flee if you can't flee to America? Um, so there's a lot of commentary here um, in, you know, subtle commentary, which is something that Mr. Robot has always done. About the social economic situations people have the political economic situations the places that they've been to or come from you can see it in the background the way people are treated the way uh, dialogues and things are said uh, music things of that nature you know you always see that in the background it makes you think and which I appreciate it don't I don't think I know a lot of people are saying he's uh, uh Sam Ismail with the Trump stuff is you know hitting people over the head with it I, I don't think that's the case I think it's just um if you tell somebody uh red car uh you know they're going to start seeing red cars all over the place when the red cars have always kind of sort of been there. They're just becoming more aware of it. I think that's what it is with the Trump thing. I think it's just because Trump is president currently, people are more aware or conscious of certain things when it's always, these conversations have always been part of intertwined in art forms and different peers in different times, no matter who the president is, the different degrees. It's just, you know, depends on who who's in charge or your political leanings, whether or not that someone telling you red car amplifies your awareness or if you're just you know consciously aware of red cars all the time or blue cars or whatever or yellow cars it doesn't you know just picking the color you know it doesn't matter you know pick a color and you'll find that car or just even find, like trucks look for trucks or look for teslas and all of a sudden you see a bunch of teslas in the on the freeway system and you didn't realize that before because you've just been hyperly aware because someone kept telling you Tesla 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 look for Teslas or do you see that Tesla that Tesla you know try to look for a Tesla just put it in, the, in your subconscious there and all of a sudden you become aware of something um, so there's that aspect of it uh, I, I believe my understanding is there's some kind of deleted scene from the first season that kind of explains why Trenton might trust Elliot but I personally haven't seen it and, and since it's not is it a lead scene I don't consider it to be canon really um maybe they'll incorporate it later maybe bring that scene some back 
back in some fashion or, or interwoven way. But as of this point now, I don't understand why Trin would trust Elliot. Um, from the contents of the email, she says, don't delete this. You know, basically she could figure it out. She said that she even investigated Romero and found out that he had put key loggers on all of the computers. So because of that, he could in fact have the encryption keys stored on his personal hard drive that the FBI have now in their evidence locker and they haven't gone into because it's all encrypted. So Elliot, if you can get into the FBI's, you know, sit, basically Sentinel program, that was the program that was surveilling, part of the program that was surveilling and housing the intelligence, then you can get the encrypted keys and then you can undo the encryptions on the E Corp servers and you can probably restore a significant amount of sanity to the world economy. Yes, E Corp has risen as White Rose had indicated it would even though Philip Price would not, um, as being um, almost a default global currency now that China has signed on. Um, but as you can see in the background with the National Guard and apparently martial law being declared, I don't know if it's across the states or just specifically to the city of New York, um, shit has hit the fan. People are suffering. People are in pain. People are, you know, I'm surprised we haven't seen dying necessarily. Maybe that will come soon. Like I know during the economic collapse, we saw a lot of suicides. We saw a lot of murders, um, murder, you know, men murdering the, you know, their families and themselves because they lost everything. Um, old people killing themselves, just, you know, um, some rise in crime to some extent. And it's, it kind of dropped simply the fact because People weren't working, they were home or in their places of business, you know, consistently and constantly on, uh, aware of their surroundings, I guess you could say, or just mostly, you know, home burglaries that dropped significantly. So those type of kind of petty crimes um, dropped simply because people were selling their shit, so they didn't have shit to steal. So there's that. Um, we haven't seen that. Maybe that'll be brought up um, later on in the either towards the end, maybe the season finale or. Uh, Maybe in the coming, whatever happens, you know, with the season finale in the coming series, we'll see some of that in the background because there are a few things that, you know, even now that now the National Guard is here in the city of New York, I was curious as to why they were not there during the blackout period, uh, why there wasn't really a mention of that, uh, considering the history of blackouts happening in the city of New York and how it has triggered riots and break-ins and things of that nature. Um, I'm surprised it's taken this long, considering what five nine happened. Uh, this we are now October fifteenth, so it's May, June, July, August, September, October. So this entire all the events from season one, basically to now, have been taking place within a year's time, maybe like a seven to eight months period period of time since we've seen it, first met Elliot till now. Um, I'm surprised that the, the guard hasn't come sooner, but now that there's been basically a terrorist attack across the nation, yeah, it makes sense that the guards in New York. Um, Darlene and Elliot making plans with each other, that they're gonna plan and um, watch casual massacre and kind of talk to each other a bit more and, and work on this and acknowledging kind of some of the wrongness that has happened, the things that they've done, you know, um, Basically, Elliot saying what he's done, you know, the the shit that they're in, you know. Uh, it was very interesting. I I don't think on this show you should make plans because <laughs> I don't think there are things that they're going to happen. Um, I think life's, you know, look like I said, be the same since season two. There are no heroes. Uh, on this show, so nobody's gonna walk off to the sunset with a gal and, and win. Um, I think you're either people are gonna wind up dead on this show or in jail. I don't think there's gonna be any great welcoming, you know, Cardi or Heroes welcome for anybody on this show. Um, but I think it's always interesting when people make plans or have made plans what that means for the, the characters and whether these plans are going to happen or not. We know there's a vengeance pack between Darlene and Elliot and now they're making um, a plan 
for uh, watching Casual Massacre, even though it's not Halloween, and making some kind of connection to each other, com comforting each other for some of the wrongness that they've done. I mean, they did do this. You know, even Elliot with his split personality as, as Mr. Robot was responsible for the, the destruction, uh, the nationwide destruction. He, they both had a plan in this. Um, they Maybe they got played by the Dark Army. Uh, maybe they got used by the Dark Army, but they very much had a plan in this. They were very much the architects of a lot of what is happening. And... Yeah, we still don't know exactly why they're still alive. I'm shocked they're still alive. I'm also shocked they've not been scooped by the FBI. But I guess the FBI wants this all to wrap up in a nice typo. So Santiago can go on with his career and not have to deal with this any longer. Um, basically being a, either a dry snitch or a snitch for the Dark Army. Because things are just, you know, with Tyra Willick um, and all that, you know. It's it's interesting. It's all interesting. Uh, we do know just from um, the time jump here that it's been three weeks since the attacks. And I know I haven't really gotten into Elliot and stuff. I just kind of want to talk about other people at first. You know, and Darlene lets Elliot know he has to go talk to her because she's completely collapsed. She's and he's like good because you know she did help kill almost like four thousand people. And Darlene's like, you can't be an asshole about this. You need to go talk to her. You know, she was there with all your shit, with your split pronouncing and things like that. And he goes, well, you know, that's different. And she goes, no, it's not. It's not different. You need to be there for her. You need to talk to her. You need to go to her. And he's like, you know, he, he has stuff he has to do. But he still makes plans with Darlene. And, um, yeah, the fact that Darlene is coming to... Elliot about this trying to comfort each other it kind of shows the bond that they do have with one another the fact that she is still concerned about Angela she cares about Angela she didn't agree with Angela's actions she's upset with Angela about, about her actions but she cares about Angela and she wants to see her um, do well have good welfare and she knows that you know Elliot is the person that can help Angela maybe help her get better if you will or snap out of it or get some kind of help um, she could, she, she completely, you know, lost it. Um, sorry, let's see. We have, let's see. I think that pretty much covers everybody else. So we have the opening of this episode where Elliot is with his father. Uh, it's back when Elliot's father was alive Edward and they're at the movie theaters and it looks like Elliot is after Elliot has we don't know exactly what's happened because Elliot's an unreliable narrator whether or not Elliot pushed himself out of the window or his father pushed him out of the window but um he has his arm in a sling he looks like he's very upset with his father and Edward's trying to make it up to him say you know let's go to the movies let's go see the jerky boys let's go see and you want to see Shallow Grave. He's trying to, you know, make up for him. And he's coughing. He's coughing a lot. And he's trying to tell Elliot, you know, he's not going to be around very much longer, basically. And that he's sorry. Will you forgive me? And Elliot was like, no. And he had, like, this very dead face, if you will. And this really upset his father, you know. You know, his kid, he doesn't have many days left. And his kid is pissed at him. His kid is angry. He's not going to forgive him. And he's trying to make up for him and he has a fit and he basically collapses on the ground and Elliot just goes over to his father as his father's kind of like almost drops dead not quite dead but almost it looks like he dropped dead um, at the movie theater um, picks up his jacket and just um, walks away and walks in and walks into the movie theater he, I guess he he wanted to see and sits down and says out loud shush the movie's about to start and then you have the whole we used to be um movies starting back in the day little prompt going on so there it shows an indication that Elliot was already having dissociated personality that very young uh we don't know if maybe the dissociated personality took over while he was having his conversation with his father or it was actually Elliot being a complete asshole because Elliot can be an asshole and can be very cold but it was just interesting that it's shown so soon in his existence he's already 
talking to somebody. Um, could it be because of the result of the blow to his head or just something within him that's always been that way? We don't we don't know why Elliot has or what circumstances cause Elliot to have a dissociative personality. Was it trauma? Was it physical trauma? Was it emotional trauma? Was it a combination of those things? Is it a genetic thing? We really don't know, but it, they are indicating to us that this has been something that's been going on with him for a very long time. And, um, yeah, so we see that, we flash back to that, and then we get to Elliot, and he, you know, it's been three weeks. He has things he has to do. He makes, you know, has a conversation with Darlene, which you talked about earlier. Um, he has a landlord take care of his dog, and it's really weird that his landlord and him have such good terms. I wonder if Elliot, like, paid up in full, did something a favor for landlord, because... Um, from my understanding with some New Yorkers, I know like a lot of them have a very mixed or ambivalent or even outright hatred towards their landlord in some cases. So, so for them to be on good terms is weird. But at the same time, I also heard people having good terms with our landlord. So it's just interesting. And he, his landlord's like, yeah, um, you, you you already left the toy that you were, you know, we we'll, would we'll get along for a day and stuff. So he leaves, he leaves Flipper with... Um, the landlord and he goes out and he's gonna burn his jacket um, burn his he he's done a wipe down it's something that Darlene interrupted him doing because basically he had um, prior to that he had deleted all the information off of his computer about Trenton and Mulby and their associations and he had um, burnt CDs for them um, I didn't get what songs there was for both of them. I should probably look that up. But yeah, he basically placed them in his little it's almost serial killer-esque little trophy case, remembrance case of all the people, you know, Sheena's in there, um, Vera's in there, that douche I guess um, Krista's boyfriend, like anytime he finishes a job and he's done with something and he needs to remember for whatever reason, he encrypts the information onto a CD, a music CD, and writes it out and puts it in the case. And you can, I think it's gonna come back. It'd be interesting because he slides the case under a dresser, and it would be interesting to see if there's a raid or something. Um, if that case comes to play, I, one scenario I thought would be like the end of the, the series, like someone gets Ellie's apartment, gets his furniture, finds the case and plays the CDs and has no idea the the content in the CDs because it's not apparent. All they're listening to is like this old music or something. Or maybe Dom finds it and finds all these, you know, CDs of great music or whatever and keeps it um, for whatever reason. I mean, it, it seems like that's it's gonna play out and it's gonna be something very innocuous and no one's gonna know like the power they have in their hand, you know? <laughs> um, but yeah, he races Trenton, he's trying to race Mr. Robot, burn the jacket, burn, um, you know, he wiped down so he drilled all the hard drives, pulled out the SED chips, the, the, the CPUs, everything did a full wipe down and um, burning stuff, gonna pay some e-coin to have his stuff burnt. Um, and he's gonna go take care of the things. And the things he's gonna take care of is two things. One, he went to go see um, Moby's brother and talk to him wondering where where, and when the funeral was so he can pay his respects. Um, when he walks to, he's walking, um, he's walking to Moby's brother's house. You can see like there's trash, like someone's trashed the guy's yard. And he comes to the door with like oh, the baseball bat all agitated and and oh it's like you know it was a friend of your brother's i just wanted to pay my respects and he the guy's like i'm not gonna pay for a funeral for that guy that guy was a fuck up he's a terrorist he's not gonna get a funeral from us and basically slams the the door on elliot and elliot kind of walks away um there's a thing before that and we'll get to that in a moment um i kind of want to talk about trenton so he goes, Elliot goes and meets Trent's family. And he, and he goes to, up to Trent's family and they are, they're leaving, they're moving away, they're throwing some trash out. Um, the father's out there, the mother's out there, the son, and her brother, um, who's a young boy, probably about like 11 to 14, maybe 13 years old, um, pops out and pops his head out and 
he Elliot uh, approaches the father the father's a little hesitant and he goes you know I knew your daughter I don't believe any things are happening you know I just wanted to say I'm sorry and the father's a little hesitant and stuff but he's like yeah you know this country wants to blame Muslims my daughter wouldn't do anything like this she's being set up um, and now he's actually, you know, what, what are you guys going to do? Are you going to move? And they, he's like, they have no choice. You know, they came here for some hope, but now there is no hope. Um, they're going to move and go back. We're not sure where they're going to go back to. Maybe go back to, to the country they're from, where it's probably even worse for them. Or um, go back to somewhere else, but they're, they're moving, they're leaving, you know. And then the father's like, I, I, I don't believe what they've done to my daughter. They, this, this is not her. She, she would never have done something like this. And Elliot's very, you know, you feel the guilt-riddenness of Elliot. Uh, he, he, he wouldn't say exactly why he, you know, how he knew Trenton. He basically said, you know, from school he basically lied. Um, or how he knew she was innocent or anything like that. But, you know, the father can sense the sincerity from Elliot. And he's like, yeah, you know, thank you for that. You know, most people are not saying nice things about his daughter right now, but you can see the devastation and the wreckness and the tension, the stress um, on the family. And uh, Trent's, you know, brother pops up and sees Elliot, and Elliot walks away. And prior to all this encounter, um, we finally, when we finally meet Elliot after he's done this, he's at the beach and he has, a, you know, morphine pills. What Elliot had done is he had gone to a drug dealer name, I think like Apple Jacks or something, some weird off-putting name. And the guy opens up a suitcase and he starts telling all the different stuff, how he has the top shelf stuff, the primo stuff, not the fake stuff, or anything like that. Um, and Elliot's like, morphine, and the guy goes, yeah. He pull, pulls out the pills, and he goes, let me go away and measure it. He goes, and Elliot goes, no, I just wanna, I wanna buy the full amount. And the guy sits down, he's like, you know, there's only three reasons on why someone wants to pull the full mount. One, they're stupid enough to buy my supply and sell in my territory. And he goes, you don't strike me as that type of person. Two, <laughs> you know, basically they're like a narc or a snitch. And he makes Elliot undress and everything. And he goes, undress. So Elliot undresses, gets pretty much fully naked and whatever. And the guy is like, oh, you're really good looking and stuff like that. And like, really trying to intimidate um, Elliot and stuff like that. And the third reason why somebody would want to buy supplies, they, they want death. They like it. They like the edge and stuff like that. And, um, so Elliot, I guess you might say, is the third one. And the guy sells him the whole, whole supply. And so Elliot buys it all. And, um, he's sitting at the beach. He's at his favorite beach, Coney Island. And he's looking at the pills and he's thinking about what's happening. And he's reflecting upon, talking, kind of talking to us about you know, all that has happened and what is what he's done, and just looking at the pills. And we already know them. Only is a morphine junkie. Um, obviously, has it probably has not been using since getting out of jail. Uh, so it's been a while for him. And is he gonna end his life? It seemed like he was ending his life. He's very despondent. He's not, you know. You know, he has a guilt of 4,000 people upon him. His revolution or the thing that uh, was supposed to destroy E Corp only made it stronger. Um, his friends are dead and they're being blamed for this. So he has a lot to feel guilty about. Uh, Sheen is dead. You know, a lot has happened really in this, in this really messed up year for him, much of to his causing in some ways. Um, and as he's about to contemplate using this morphine or take a good chunk of it, um, Trenton's brother shows up. And Trenton's brother is like, hi, <laughs> you know, how do you know my sister? I'm trying to get the 411 from Elliot. And Elliot's like, who, what? Did you follow me? He's like, yeah. Um, and he's like, why don't you go back the way you came? You know, why don't you go home? Because I don't know how to go home. Why don't you come back the way you came? I just basically followed you. And so he's like, they're talking, you know, how do you know my sister, you know, and Ellie's like, I got things to do, man, I have things to do, he goes, so what things, you know, things, important things, well, you know, you, you came by my house, I wanted to know a little bit more about you, and know about Trenton, and how do you know my sister, and Elliot was like, like, I'm taking you home, and that's it, so that he, they go all the way back, take the train, go all the way back, I guess, to, um, where Trenton's at, Trent's family's home's at, and the kid's parents are gone. He goes, 
where are your parents? He goes, I get, well, they kind of left me. They sometimes do that. And he goes, well, we can't sit here, stay here. How long will you be? He goes, well, they went to my uncle's house and it's like two hours away. He goes, two hours away. Won't you take me to the movies? And the kids are being like super annoying, but very insightful. And Elliot's like, no, I'm not going to take you to the movies. Well, okay. You know, and start talking about like, what things are you going to do? You know, what it, about stuff like that. And Elliot's like, Jesus Christ. He goes, fine. You shut up if I take you to the movies. He goes, yeah. So they go, they go to the movies and they're standing in line. And Elliot's like, I can't believe this. And it's back to the teacher day. Uh, he had completely almost forgotten about this. And he goes, we're going to go see this movie. And the kid's like, and so Elliot uh, gets a popcorn and he puts the M&M's in it. It's something that he and his father used to do. And the kid's looking at him weird like, what are you doing? And he goes, just watch, just eat it. You know, you know your little shit, just eat it. And so the kid eats, um, takes a bite of it. He goes, you know, why are we seeing this old movie? What's about this movie? He goes, I, and Elliot's like, I've been dreaming about this for a very long time. I've always wanted to see this movie on this day. And he goes, well, what's the movie about? And Elliot tries to explain how it's about, you know, this guy, he has to go back and try to save um, himself, basically, by going back, you know, to the past, to, to his parents. And then there's other participants, um in the line and they go no no that's not what it's about it's about so much deeper than this and so you know pretty nerd stuff everyone's all dressed up in back to future stuff some people are like sharks some people are like docs some people are different versions of marty different versions of Lorraine, some biffs you know it's all like is a whole back to the future thing is happening at this movie theater and it's back to future one two and three and of course they're going to go see back to the future two not going to show the first movie, just going to go straight to the second movie, which is a little weird. And the kid's in the line and goes, well, why can't we see The Martian? You know, Matt Damon's cute. <laughs> it has 94% uh, rotten, you know, rotten tomato ratings. And he goes, that movie looks like it sucks, Elliot says. <laughs> so it was, it was very funny. Um, something the kid wanted to do. Uh, he says his parents don't take him to the movies. Um, and they go, you know, Elliot sits down um, with the kid. They're watching the movie. Um, at some point, um, the kid um, leaves. Elliot realizes the kid ditched him, and he starts looking around. And they had an earlier conversation earlier about where they could go and stuff like that. And one of the places the kid wanted to go was to go to the mosque. And Elliot was like, no, we're not going to a mosque. So he realizes that's where the kid went. Uh, when Elliot left, um, the movie theater uh, he runs into this guy this Hasidic Jew uh, selling ice cream and Elliot goes um do you know where the local mosque is and the guy goes which one and I said I'm not really sure <laughs> which one he goes I know both I know both places and they sit down and the guy's playing um, the audio play of world of the war world world of the wars and and Elliot's like well, why are you playing this he goes well kind of makes sense you know really you know, of the time and stuff like that. And, you know, the guy drops him, Elliot off at the, one of the mosques. Turns out to be the right one and trains the kid is there. And Elliot was, going, was like, you know, if you really wanted to go here, I would have taken you here. You know, we need to go back. We need to go back home. Your parents are probably, you know, missing you. And he goes, you don't want to do any of that. You, you're not interested in any of that. And, you know, they start talking and he goes, it's all my fault. You know, what happened to his sister? And Elliot's looking at him, and it's like, no, it's, it's not your fault. It, none of this is your fault. Um, you know, it's kind of my fault, you know. And, and the kid yells at Elliot, and he goes, you know, I wish you were the one who was dead. And Elliot was like, I wish I was too, you know. And they had this whole conversation with each other about trying to, you know, comfort each other. And Elliot's really trying to comfort this kid, saying, you know, it's not your fault what has happened is my fault all of it all this happened to your sister all this happened to everybody all this happened to your parents is my fault i'm the person to blame and <laughs> the kid goes you know you talked about yourself a lot <laughs> and there's no shoes allowed in the mosque you know the kid keeps it real he keeps it very poignant and elliot does talk about himself a lot elliot does take you know his shoes off and stuff like that and um they have a conversation, and it's very interesting and very poignant conversation. Um, you know, Elliot tries to comfort this kid, you know, about the loss of his sister, someone who was very, very important to him, you know. You know, it, he tells Elliot, you know, I'm the only one in my country, my family is born in America. I'm the only one who can be president. 
and how neat that is and how you know kind of sense of pride and how his parents work all the time and how you know his sister who's really smart and, and you know he thinks the world of her you know couldn't do that you know but he could and the promise of him and you know he asked Elliot where he was born and uh, Elliot's like you know I was born here uh, you know where and he goes like New Jersey I was born in New Jersey too I was born in Trenton <laughs> you know and Elliot tells her I was born in Washington you know township and you know they had a little connection a little connection and they eventually go back to Trenton's home and it turns out the kid had the keys the whole time <laughs> and stuff and <laughs> Elliot is like He's like, you had the whole keys the whole time? And the kid's like, yeah. He goes, wait here, I have something for you. And um, when um, he gives Elliot a lollipop, because when Elliot first met him, and he's wondering why he had a big old bag of pills, he says, I'm sick. That's sort of my sickness. He goes, here, this will you know help you with your sickness. And he gives him a lollipop. And Elliot gets really emotional. He was kind of crying on the doorsteps because... I think he kind of realized, you know, the, not only the weight of what he's doing, but, you know, about people, people in his life, about people with the ramifications, but just this kid, this kid just being a kid, it just kind of hit him, and he gets his lollipop, and he, he thanks him, and makes sure, you know, Trent's brother locks up, Mohammed is his name, locks up the, the door, and... You know, he walks away and he, and he goes does his Elliot thing, which is his hacking thing. So he goes back to Moby's brother, Moby's brother who's been a dick, uh, about giving his brother a funeral. And he knocks on the door. And the guy's like, you again? What are you doing here? I'm going to call the cops. He knows, no, you're not. Here's why. Because you and your, you know, he goes, you're going to give your brother a funeral. He goes, why am I going to give that shit a funeral? He's been a screw up his whole life. I'm gonna, probably going to get fired from my farm because... Look, I look into you. I know you and your farm are doing da 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 stuff and shady stuff and buybacking pills and things of that that nature. Um, and here, I went and met your your friend Ajax or whatever they get Apple Jacks, Apple Jacks and whatever. You could probably make some, about some money, whatever, um, by selling those back to him. Um, but you're gonna give your brother a funeral. It's gonna be proper. You're gonna have people attend, and it's gonna be paid for. And basically, I'm going to show up, and I'm going to know that. If not, I'm going to turn all your emails and your correspondence between you and your partners and the scams you guys are doing and hand it over to the feds. And then he walks away. <laughs> he walks away. Um, and the proof of him knowing all the things about Moby's brother is the fact that he knows about the drug dealer and, and the, the morphine pills. And he, he walks away, and he goes home, sits down, and that's when he gets Trenton's email. But don't delete me. And so, it was a very good episode. It was a very, uh, you know, a little decompression episode from what happened last episode with the aftermath of what happened to Trin and Moby, um, dealing with all of that. Um, it was a good slow down place. I just, I honestly don't know why Trin trusts Elliot. Maybe she knows about the, um, I don't know, the uh, other personality. Maybe you know, she knows all the like side uh, vengeful hero acts that Elliot does on the side or something. And I'm not sure what her motivation was, but she gave Elliot, I guess you might say, a reason to live. Like he somehow undo this. He could somehow undo it, stop Dark Army, stop E Corp in some way undo what is happening, the suffering is happening, and get things back on track. We'll see if that happens. Um, overall, I really enjoyed the episode. I thought it was very poignant. I know sometimes bringing kids into a show or a movie, you know, kind of throws things off. I think it worked very well. I think the kid that played uh, Trin's brother, Muhammad, was a very good actor. He played off very well against Rami Alec, against Elliot, and, and he acted like a kid would, but uh, at the same time, was able to go toe to toe with kind of the centuries that are, that are essentially the Elliot character. Um, it'll be interesting to see where it goes from here. Um, you can see in the background, like with the decay of New York, obviously the, the country is kind of somewhat in a sense falling apart, um, both economically and socially. Um, 
will the drum marches of war with the Remember 7-1 will the United States, in essence, in this show, attack Iran? Not sure. We'll see. But overall, I really enjoyed the episode. Uh, it gives really strong insights to some um, characters that I enjoyed, particularly Joe Dittrin, most of anything. Um, and it, it gave... It gave Elliot's character, more so than the Mr. Robot character, but Elliot's character says a purpose. Like, maybe he can actually be the hero that he wants to be and undo all this and, and make things right. Um, don't know what's going on from here. Oh, this show. This show is so hard to predict now. Um, but yeah, so I have a sense that this is the, like the the eye of the storm, the calm before whatever is going to happen. But that is it for now. Uh, thank you very much for listening. Um, you know, like, subscribe, um, share. If you're listening to this through the, vo the podcast, the same thing, share, tweet about it. Um, support the show any way you can. There's some links below, um, Amazon links. You know, it's uh, the holiday season. Uh, anything will help. But thank you very much. Um, and until next time, friends, as this is Rosa Shibe, your moderator, I'm logging off.